Okay, so Pi News episode 77. And definitely a more positive Pi News as far as stock is concerned. So since this interview which Jeff Geerling did with Evan Upton from Raspberry Pi Foundation. And it was a great interview, definitely worth watching. Loads of points in there, but I wanted to cover a few things. In the video, Eben announced that the Pi Shop will soon have as many Pi Zeros as you need. It seems to be Pi Zero Ws, not two Ws, unfortunately. He said that quarter one was the lowest production since quarter three of 2015, uh, where they only produced 750 to 800,000 units. But he did say that in quarter three and quarter four, they'll be broadly unconstrained. Jeff and Eben discussed the anger around the shortage and scalpers, but prices are still below inflation. So as I say, definitely worth looking at that video, so I'll put a link in the description. And another bit of positive news from Tom's Hardware on the same subject, Raspberry Pi CEO, million unit months are ahead. From July 2023, we could see a million Raspberry Pis per month. So from the story here, sales projections for May 2023 are 600,000 units, with an expected 800,000 units in June. But July is where things get exciting, with Raspberry Pi expecting to sustain 1 million units per month for as long as necessary to clear the remaining backlog. Great news. And it's been reflected on Facebook. Impressive, there have been RPI4 on sale somewhere in Europe for at least a month. That's included Raspberry Pi 4s and Compute Module 4s. Third day in a row that Pi Moroni UK has had Raspberry Pi 4 in stock for £62. And this link here shows them on the shelf in Micro Center. And if we have a look at RPI Locator, you can see uh, Evan was right about the Pi Zeros. There are loads of them here in all sorts of countries uh, with and without headers. Then we've got Raspberry Pi 4 available here. Raspberry Pi 3 Model A is available. I've never seen this so green. And I did get excited when I saw this on Facebook. So this was on the 16th of May. Uh, you can see my other computer cost $35. It's a sticker from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, um, but it hasn't been true for quite some time, that sort of price and availability. But unfortunately, when we go to the link, uh, it no longer has that on there. I had to use the view original link on Facebook to be able to see it, uh, but it was actually a link for an OKD Rock 3. I mean, to be fair, good price, uh, but they also have problems. Uh, back order, available to back order for dispatch, 19th of June. And I must mention my new favorite Amazon buy. Uh, these self-adhesive hooks, I got 20 of them for £2.99. They stick really well, and I've got them to the side of my desk. You can see I've hung various things on there. I'm going to organise them better. I've just been sticking them up just to be able to uh, see how they go and things like that. But uh, yeah, really, really handy. And this is in my new desk, which luckily, because you can see it's a mess, I can just close these doors, and I have a tidy kit. I have a tidy kitchen and a noisy cat. Next up from ZDNet, this Raspberry Pi or other SBC cooler is better than heat sinks and fans for me. So if we scroll down, you can see that it doesn't look like normal fans or heat sinks. A Peltier thermoelectric cooler module. This works by taking advantage of the Peltier effect in simple terms when an electric current is passed through two dissimilar conductive materials, usually a pair of semiconductors joined together, heat is transferred from one side to the other. This results in one side becoming cooler while the other side becomes hotter. And I'll put a link in the description to this article because it's really interesting to read. But it does say here, the thermoelectric module is a far more effective cooler than using a heat sink and fan alone. And you can see it next to a Radaxa board here. And there's all instructions and everything in there. Next up, Alexander from Berry Server has announced that he's added CoinOps Legends 3, which is like a fully loaded gaming image uh, from Arcade Punks to Berry Boot, which means that you can multi-boot it with pretty much any operating system of your choice. I've got loads of videos on Berry Boot if you're interested, but that's nice to see. And also he says, I can take a couple of gaming image requests, let me know what other gaming image I should convert. Back to Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Pico mechanical keyboard kits offer RGB support and OLED display. And you can see here, very cool looking with their little displays and everything, with the raised keys. The new kits are called the Pi 50 and Pi 40, so $35 and $30. Both are already available for purchase from the official 1UP Keyboards website. There are plenty of upgrade options for different shells, keycaps, etc. RGB lighting, rotary encoder knob. I wonder if you can use that for arcade games. And can output to a 0.91 inch OLED display. And there's some images here. Yeah, I like the rotary control and the little Pico at the back. Cool story from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Refurbished vending machine. 
a tech fan's plan to give something back to his community led to a Raspberry Pi based dispenser. And if we scroll down, you can just about make out there is a Raspberry Pi 4 in amongst all those cables and that's a lot of cabling. Proceeds from the Raspberry Pi 4 controlled vending machine now benefit his local church. And he's 17 years old. Yeah, very impressive. Some commercial Raspberry Pis here. You can see here German firm has turned Raspberry Pis into serious industrial grade network devices. And they do look cool. If we zoom into this image here, uh, you can see Revolution Pi, Rev Pi Core S. And it says powered by Raspberry Pi down here. Low cost Raspberry Pi micro PCs have been part of the digital signage ecosystem for probably a decade now, but one of the knocks against the devices has been the need to put together the various hardware components, including a case, to come up with a serviceable, sufficiently rugged unit to put in the field. And it says here Revolution Pi has shipped more than 1 million units for industrial applications. This next story is from Tom's Hardware and it's really referencing a YouTube video. Raspberry Pi malware infects using default username and password. If you haven't changed your default username and password, it's not so much of a thing anymore because when you write an image, uh, it does actually want to create a username and a password. But originally, when you bought a Raspberry Pi uh, and set it up with the original operating system, the username was Pi and the password was Raspberry. And so, People have cottoned on to that and uh, well it's been happening for a long time but it's been highlighted again in this video. So yeah definitely worth changing that. You can go into terminal uh, and you can type PAWSWD to change your password uh, and it will prompt you to put in your current password and it will prompt you to choose a new one. So it's definitely worth doing that but this is just highlighting that yeah if it's on those standard username and password settings then you may be at risk. Really weird one from raspberrypi.com this massive nose sniffs things then prints a description of the smell. So if we scroll down you can see there is a massive nose there. Ad nose is an interactive sculpture combining image recognition and machine learning. It was 3D printed in separate pieces before being assembled and then finished to give it a sculptural look. Adnan modelled it after his own nose. So inside it it's got a Raspberry Pi 4, a Raspberry Pi camera with a fisheye lens, distance sensor, thermal printer, and a speaker. So when the user places something under the nose, a distance sensor connected to the Raspberry Pi detects that something is there and then has the Raspberry Pi take a picture. The Pi discerns what the object is using a Python script that feeds the photo it took into Google Images. Now you might be wondering what it's actually sniffing. It's not sniffing, but it's using Google's image decision as to what the object is and sends it to GPT-4 which composes a description of what said object probably smells like in a poetic fashion. A thermal printer connected to the Raspberry Pi then delivers it through the nostril of the sculpture. It's just so weird, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting take on what to use a Raspberry Pi for, but I'm sure it's very interesting to try it out. And last up, we've got a Pi in the wild. I retired a GoGo Gate 2 smart garage door opener and decided to crack it open and see if there are any good parts for projects. Under their proprietary board was a Raspberry Pi A plus 1.1. You never know where you'll find a Pi. And there it is in close up. And Raspberry Pi related, I've been sent this Crow Vision, which is a something like a 10 inch touchscreen. I'll be doing a separate video on it anyway. Um, but just to show you the back of it, because it's quite interesting. So decent sized touchscreen, but on the back of it, we have these adapters that you can move to fit different SBCs. So we can move them around, lock them in place, and put whatever SBC you like on the back, and it takes ordinary HDMI in. Well, that's an HDMI mini. So I'll do a video on that soon. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.